Manduma Yandemufayo, was the last king of the Ukwanyama kingdom, a subset of the Ovambo people of the Bantu group living in southern Angola and northern Namibia. He was born in 1894 at Mbulunganga, some 15 kilometers west of Onjiva in present-day Angola. He was the son of Nemufayo Ya Hayihambo and Napona Yashikende, the sister of King Mandume, and his subjects at Ukwanyama Royal Palace in Oihole circa 1916. Kwanyama's prominent kings Weyulu Yahedimbi ruled from 1884 to 1904, and King Nande from 1904 to 1911, and thus, under the matrilineal system of the Kwanyama people, heir to the Kwanyama kingship, as it is common commotion in many royal families where there are problems in succeeding the throne. Mandumi grew up during a time of significant upheaval in the Ukwanyama kingdom due to the presence of European merchants and missionaries. Third in line for succession to the Kwanyama throne, the prince lived in fear of assassination from an early age. Mandume's life had been endangered as well as just from birth, as his uncles intended to kill him. According to many accounts, his aunt Nakoto, King Wayulu and King Nande's aunt, had been hiding him in an anteater hole, Okwena. When his aunt came to feed him one night, Mandume was already at the entrance and was burned on the left side of his face, which left a small scar where he usually put, Okakatha, to conceal the scar. As he grew too big to be kept in the hole, Nakoto took him to his aunt Hipondoka Nyanya, who had been hiding him again in her crawl. Eventually, Mandume was whisked to Oshitebe for safety, which was situated further northwest of Ukwanyama, where he remained until he was about ten years old. He returned back to his aunt Nakoto, who took him into her kraal again, where he remained most of his time as a youth under her protection. After Nande's death, Mandume was elevated and became king of the Kwanyamas in 1911 at the age of 17. Mandume grew up with a great vengeance and unfriendly in demeanor as a young boy. He had grown up with a number of grudges. The Ukwanyama kingdom was already split by the 1884 Berlin Conference into the areas of Portuguese West Africa and German Southwest Africa before he became the king. Mandum vowed to remain unmarried until his reforms were effective, which he equated it with bringing peace to Ukwanyama. At the time when he became a king, the country was already divided between two European powers, Portugal in North and Germany in the South. Kwanyama territory was also still under pressure from the colonial powers that were operating in the region. Mandume saw the real culmination and unprecedentedly upheavals unfolding in his eyes. The Portuguese were the immediate threat, who already claimed the largest northern part of Kwanyama territory by the default agreement made via the Scramble of Africa of 1884 between the colonial masters. Mandume inherited a kingdom marked by significant social disorders, which his predecessors had left unchecked, and he undertook a radical action to improve the situation by instituting progressive Agrianian reforms. He is represented in both written and oral accounts as having from the first a coherent integrated vision of necessary internal change for Ukwanyama in general. First, he announced the decrees that forbid fruit trees from being harvested while unmatured or ripe. Second, he prohibited random shooting within the kingdom as guns were being popular owned and fired unnecessarily in the country, resulting in deaths. He advised that ammunition should be spared for the war against the white men. One of Mandume's greatest concerns was the fact that the Portuguese were recruiting commoners to replace the hereditary bloodline of chiefs with their own puppet headmen who were loyal to them, thus weakening the control of the traditional leaders. Another of Mandume's concerns was the spreading influence of the Church of Rhenish and Lutheran missionaries, which he regarded as agents of the penetration by colonial powers. According to Ukwamaya history, he burned down a Roman Catholic mission stations at Ipanda and Onjiva and subsequently expelled them out. Yande Mufayo had a reputation for expelling Christians within the Ukwanyama kingdom, and numerous Christian families fled to the Ondonga kingdom. He also put an end to the Portuguese illegally taxes in the part of his territory that they controlled. Actions such as these made him unpopular with the colonial authorities, who rightly perceived Mandume as an obstacle to their plans for hegemony over the parts of Awambaland that they claimed. No European colonizer challenged the well-organized and well-armed Ovambo kingdoms until 1915 and the beginning of the First World War, which coincided with a massive local drought. 
During the Battle of Omongwa, Yanda Mufayo and the Kwanyamas resisted a Portuguese attack for three days. Simultaneously, the South African forces peacefully conquered the portion of the Ukwanyama Kingdom formerly located in German Southwest Africa. Due to heavy losses, Yanda Mufayo was forced to relocate the Kwanyama capital to the area of Southwest Africa. In February 1917, after Yanda Mufayo refused to submit to South African control, he died in battle against the South Africans. The cause of his death is disputed. South African records show his death from machine gun fire, while oral and popular history described his death as suicide. The Ukwanyama kingship was abolished following his death in 1917, after Mandume's tragic end and his burial at Oiholi. The members of the royal family kept a low profile for decades, fearing persecution. The Ukwanyama had to adjust to living in two different countries, ruled by foreign powers. Mandume's people never forgot their king. Each year on the 6th of February, they gathered at Oiholi at his grave and covering it with branches of mopane trees. When a community member passed his grave, he or she always brought a mopane branch along. On the 6th of February, 1996, exactly 79 years after Mandume's death, a member of the royal family, Cornelius Mwetupunga Shalungu, was inaugurated as traditional leader, Ohamba, of the Ukwanyama Traditional Authority. Shalungu died on the 3rd of November, 2005, aged 89. To the surprise of the community, he on his deathbed named a woman from the royal lineage as his successor. His wish was fulfilled, and the first female Ukwanyamna, Ohamba, Mikulu Martha Mwadinomho Yakristian Nelombu, then aged 74, was inaugurated at Omhedi on the 12th of November 2005 during a colorful ceremony. Mandume Yandemufayo is one of nine national heroes of Namibia that were identified at the inauguration of the country's Heroes Acre near Windhoek. Founding President Sam Nujoma remarked in his inauguration speech on the 26th of August 2002 that it is better to die fighting than to become a slave of the colonial forces. These were the defiant words of one of Namibia's foremost anti-colonialist fighters. He said these words in defiance when the combined European colonial forces insisted he should surrender. To his revolutionary spirit and his visionary memory, we humbly offer our honor and respect. Yanda Mufayo is honored in form of a granite tombstone with his name engraved and his portrait plastered onto the slab. King Mandume is also celebrated in Angola, having streets named after him in various cities of the country. A university in Angola established in 1963, Universidade Mandume Yanda Mufayo is named after King Mandume. In February 2017, a 100th anniversary of the death of Ukwanyama King Mandume Yanda Mufayo was attended by thousands of Namibians at Omendi in the Ohangwena region, including former Namibian presidents, also the current president Haga Geimgob, who unveiled a bust of King Mandume. Yanda Mufayo has a street named after him stretching from the Windhoek city center to Namibia's National University, the University of Namibia.